Okay, I'm a lecturer at Aalto University, Helsinki, Finland, and uh, I mainly teach uh, engineering students uh, of the first and second years basic math courses, like most of my colleagues. And uh, I know that uh, there are many experts of stack in the audience, much better experts than I. I'm just a beginner, but I think the main idea was to have some very elementary stack lecture in the beginning because there will be some more advanced things later today and uh, so if someone has never heard or seen stack so this is maybe for those and uh, the others can relax so <clears throat> here are some topics that i will talk about so i will show a few slides in the beginning and then uh, some examples First examples will be uh, how a student sees a stack problem, and then how does the person who produces stack problems see them. And there are many questions here, so I hope you will also get some answers. So where does the name stack come from. It's the system for teaching and assessment using a computer algebra kernel. Uh, it was created by Chris Sanguin in 2004, so it's more than 15 years old now. There have been different versions of the uh, program and uh, there are some links to the home pages. I will not show this documentation or anything else from these pages, but you can find lots of information and some video lectures how to start using stack in these pages and um, i think today the main developers of stack are sanguine my colleague matti harjula from alto university who is also present in the conference so if you have difficult questions he may be uh, able to answer them not me and then Tim Hunt from Open University in UK. And um, we started using Stack at Aalto University. So it's a rather new university. It was made by combining three different universities, one for engineering, one for economics, and one for arts and design. And um, there are about 20,000 students. And um, uh, so we started about 2009, 10 years ago. Antti Rasila was then the main person who initiated the use of Stack at our university and especially in the basic courses. And um, Matti Harjula produced a uh, year ago some statistics about Stack uh, usage in our university. So I think the estimate is that during one semester, half a year, about 80,000 stack problems were solved by Aalto engineering students. So it means that if we have, let's say, 2,000 students studying their first and second year, so everybody solved about 40 problems or something like that. So here is a big list of uh, things. I'm not sure if it's necessary to, to read everything allowed but um, so the stack is a system for producing math and science exercises so that the input can be much more than just numbers it can be a formula expression like a polynomial a general solution for a differential equation or something like that and um, the uh, answers are typed with a very natural syntax I don't think uh, that the students have very big problems with the syntax and especially because there's a validation procedure uh, for the answer. You will see something about it later. So you don't have to uh, return an answer that doesn't look something that you wanted to write. And in applications, it's useful to have some units uh, and uh, so on. But uh, the most important thing for me is that uh, it's possible to randomize 
the problems so that every student or maybe not every student has a different uh, but equivalent problem i think it's enough that most students have different parameters so that they can't uh, just copy the answer from their friend and uh, the problems will be checked automatically there's immediate feedback and uh, maybe some ideas what is wrong if the answer is not correct and um, there's also a model solution the system is not so far that the it would produce automatic solutions but the person who makes the problem must uh, program the solution but maybe someday we will see everything automatic and then there is some natural things uh, i think maybe i'll mention this last part it's about stateful problems that adapt to something that the students has done before and uh, Matti is uh, perhaps the best expert in this Matti Harjula. Uh, why we started using stack i think one of the main reasons was that it is free and uh, uh, it's very suitable for mathematical expressions because the answers need not always be the same. They can be correct, even though they don't look exactly what the teacher wanted to have. So Maxima is the system that checks the answers and uh, it can handle quite well equivalent expressions. And uh, so this randomization uh, is very good. Uh, it's easy to give more weight to the exercises uh, when the students can't just copy the answer. They have to more or less do it themselves. And especially at this time when uh, it's difficult to organize any real exams, uh, I have done this. I have increased the weight of exercises somewhat. And um, uh, from the pedagogical point of view, this um, is very important in the center. So the students cannot talk about the correct solution, but they have to discuss the intermediate steps. And so when doing this, they will also learn something from each other. And it's very flexible, so you just need internet access but of course, I think most students still do the real calculation on paper and pen or some pad. So here is an example of a very simple problem. A second, you want to produce a stack problem where the student has to solve this second order equation and with some random coefficients so if you are careless you may just randomize the coefficients and it may lead to very different kind of equations they are not the same for the level of difficulty is not the same for every student and that's not good and then there are two solutions, uh, x1 and x2, but there is no general rule which says that x1 must be this and x2 must be the other one. Especially if they are complex numbers, there's uh, no natural way to order them. And then <clears throat> when you do the model solution, I think if you can see the last line uh, for the discriminant, uh, many students would like to write, uh, and they actually do write the discriminant like this, but uh, the teacher doesn't like this kind of thing. So you have to uh, find ways to deal with negative numbers in the intermediate steps, how to put uh, parentheses in the correct places. And so what you must do is uh, you start with randomizing the solutions M and N and uh, then go backwards and produce the equation that you want to solve. So here are some basic uh, commands, how to do the randomization and then produce the 
equation. And um, if you are, know some maxima commands, you can do this in many different ways. And uh, it's always a good idea to calculate intermediate steps with maxima so you don't do any stupid mistakes yourself, hopefully. And uh, I'm not the correct person to answer this question, what is the future? Uh, but uh, there's uh, constant development. I don't know if Matti wants to say something in the chat about this, but uh, certainly he and Sangwin know this the best. And um, of course, uh, a pro program like this uh, is useful if there are many users who produce and share problems with each other. And uh, one method of doing this is this Abacus uh, problem bank. Uh, it was uh, founded and is now coordinated by Antti Rasila, uh, who is now in Wangdong Technion in China, but he is still active in this Abacus project and um, many other things. And um, <clears throat> so I will show more. Uh, examples, concrete examples, how does this look like? But uh, let me just remind that, that uh, later today, Mikko Karjalainen will show how to combine stack with JSX graph in uh, more detail. Okay, here are some calculus problems for my course. Uh, this is rather easy to understand what you have to do. Uh, there's a missing part in some graph of a piecewise defined function. And the missing part is third degree polynomial. And because it's uh, not a simple problem to solve this in your head, I have calculated the coefficients uh, here. So about the validation, if you want to uh, return something like this, the program immediately says that you can't have this kind of an answer. So let's see if Maple got the result correct. And uh, indeed, it is correct. This is a smooth curve. So the idea was uh, not only to have a continuous uh, function, but uh, different, continuously differentiable function. And the green part shows this idea. Hmm. Navigation is here. Let's go to number three. Uh, so this is a usual calculus problem without any graphs. It's a second order non-homogeneous differential equation and uh, the problem. There's some explanation, something to re remind the student how to do this. And then the real problem solving this equation and with some initial values. I didn't do this uh, before, but let's see. I think lambda one must be four, and this may be two, and uh, it's not so interesting to do the rest. But see, let's see if I get any points for this partial solution. Ah, oh, okay. It didn't do anything because I didn't uh, fill all the things. So next uh, problem is again, something with graphs. So the student must uh, analyze what is uh, an even and odd function. And then first uh, you have to choose some uh, answers. I think this is even and so on. It's not very difficult if you know the idea what uh, these things mean. Uh, okay, 
uh, I typed the solution here beforehand and uh, now it has already checked the problem. So the idea was that the blue part was first visible and then when you check your answer it will give the red part which seems to be the correct even extension for this function given by this formula six times cosine six x plus seven x so it's minus sign here and then one more example about integration this uh, was made by Miko Karjalainen so what you more or less have to do is to solve this uh, by integrating twice and uh, the idea is that you have to see the picture and uh, find some conditions for the function so that the rabbit can jump from uh, the initial position to the carrot. Let's try what happens with the wrong solution. It goes too high. Let's try again with the correct solution. Oops, there's also some additional information. Where did it go? And now I think it looks better. Poor carrot. Oops. I don't know what happened, but uh, actually I'm finishing this and uh, I'll go to the last part. Um, so how does a stack problem look inside if you want to do it yourself? So here is the problem that uh, I will show first. Uh, it's very badly formulated, I see now, because nobody has defined what is fx and uh, you want to know what is f prime. Uh, but uh, let's not worry about this. So this is very simple. I think this is one of the simplest examples uh, I could uh, figure out. It still has randomization. It has the coefficient randomized and the exponent randomized. And uh, let's see how it looks inside. So what you have to do to obtain this basic randomized problem, you have to give it a name and then you must do the randomization. So in this problem, it doesn't matter if the coefficient and the exponent are the same or different. So there is no restrictions, um, but there are two parameters A and B and the function that we are looking at is this A times X to the power B. And uh, so let's be careful and calculate the correct answer with the maxima DF is the derivative. And then there is the problem text uh, written in this way. So this is the syntax you have to use. And maybe I will make it correct. So f is the randomized function inside these uh, symbols. And then this produces the box where the student gives the answer. And this is um, called general feedback, but actually it is the model solution with the parameters that the student received. And uh, it looks a little bit complicated because you have to take the parameters from above. Uh, so you can not just write A and B and so on, but you have to use the randomized versions. And then <clears throat> for the answer, your model answer is this df that we did before. Uh, input type is algebraic. And uh, that's enough for this part. And the last part is a potential response tree. And uh, it gives one point and it has only one node. Uh, the answer is either correct or incorrect and you get one or zero points. So the program compares students answer, which was 
recorded as ANS1 to the teacher's answer DF. Maybe this is not the best syntax to use, but uh, this is the idea. And uh, if I have one minute, I can show another problem. This is the second uh, degree equation. And um, I think the only thing to show is that this response tree will now be more complicated. So the first node means that the answer was correct. Both routes are correct. You will get one point. If one or two routes are false, then you go to the second node. And if one is correct only, you get half a point. And if both are wrong, then you get zero. So I think my time is up and uh, I will finish here.